Silence, heavy, suffocating silence pressed down on the courtroom. Every gaze was fixed on the prosecutor. His voice was sharp, accusatory. Miss Stevens, he boomed, acted with premeditation and malice. She orchestrated a web of lies. The defence attorney sat calmly. Her eyes held a glint of steel. When she rose to speak, her voice was quiet but firm. The prosecution, she stated, is relying on assumptions. We intend to prove that Miss Stevens is a victim. The air crackled with unspoken tension. The jury absorbed every word. This wasn't just a trial. It was a battle of narratives. The gallery was packed, a sea of faces reflecting a mixture of curiosity, judgment and barely concealed excitement. Reporters scribbled furiously, their pens scratching against notepads, hungry for any detail, any whisper that could fuel the firestorm this trial had become. Among the spectators, Miss Stevens' family sat huddled together, their faces etched with worry and disbelief. Her sister, eyes red-rimmed and swollen, clutched her mother's hand, seeking solace that seemed impossible to find. Across the aisle, the family of the victim sat stoic, their faces hardened masks of grief and anger. Their eyes, filled with a mix of pain and accusation, never left Miss Stevens. Every so often a murmur would ripple through the courtroom, hushed whispers speculating on guilt or innocence, fueling the already palpable tension. The judge, a stern figure in his black robe, surveyed the scene. He slammed his gavel, demanding order, but the tension was a living thing, coiling tighter with every passing moment, threatening to erupt and consume them all. Outside the courthouse, chaos reigned. A swarm of journalists and camera crews had transformed the steps into a frenzied battleground. Microphones and cameras thrust forward like weapons. Every word, every image beamed out across the nation, turning a personal tragedy into a public spectacle. Protesters, their signs held high, added to the cacophony. Some clamoured for justice, their faces contorted with anger, demanding retribution for the alleged crime. Others, their voices filled with doubt, questioned the narrative being spun, holding signs proclaiming Miss Stevens' innocence. The media, hungry for a story, devoured every detail, amplifying the whispers and accusations, fueling the flames of public opinion. Social media exploded, hashtags trending, opinions divided, the lines between fact and fiction blurring with every click, every share. The pressure was relentless, an invisible force pressing down on everyone involved, a constant reminder that this trial was about more than just one woman's fate. It was a referendum on their beliefs, their values. Throughout the proceedings, Miss Stevens sat at the defence table, a picture of composure that belied the turmoil within. Her face, once vibrant, was now pale, her eyes betraying fear. She hadn't anticipated this media frenzy, this public dissection of her life. All she had wanted was a fresh start, a chance at happiness. Now she was trapped in a nightmare, her life laid bare for all to judge. She was left to face the consequences. In the quiet moments, away from the courtroom drama, the weight of the accusations pressed down on Miss Stevens' family with agonizing force. Her parents, their faces etched with worry and confusion, struggled to reconcile the daughter they knew with the woman portrayed in the media. Her sister, once her closest confidant, now seemed distant. Her eyes filled with a mixture of doubt and betrayal. The accusations had driven a wedge between them, fracturing the bond they had always shared. I don't understand her sister had whispered, her voice trembling with unshed tears. How could you, how could this happen? There were no answers, only a deafening silence that stretched between them, filled with unspoken questions and the crushing weight of uncertainty. The trial had become an unwelcome guest, casting a long shadow over their lives, threatening to tear them apart. As shadows of doubt, as the trial progressed, a seed of doubt began to take root in the minds of some observers. The prosecution's case, initially so strong, started to show cracks. Witnesses contradicted themselves, evidence seemed circumstantial, and the narrative began to unravel. Miss Stevens' attorney, with her quiet confidence and sharp intellect, chipped away at the prosecution's case, highlighting inconsistencies and raising uncomfortable questions. She presented an alternative perspective, painting Miss Stevens as a victim of circumstance a woman manipulated and betrayed. The jury, once seemingly convinced of her guilt, now looked uncertain, their faces etched with doubt 
and confusion. The courtroom, once abuzz with whispers of condemnation, grew quiet, the air thick with anticipation. The truth, elusive and obscured, seemed to shift and change with each new revelation. The lines between right and wrong, guilt and innocence blurred, leaving everyone questioning what they thought they knew. Echoes of a Generation, the trial with its themes of love, betrayal and the complexities of modern relationships resonated far beyond the courtroom walls. It sparked conversations, ignited debates and forced society to confront uncomfortable truths about the world they lived in. The rise of online dating, the prevalence of social media and the shifting dynamics of relationships had created a landscape where connection and deception were intertwined. The case became a lightning rod, a symbol of the challenges and dangers of navigating love and intimacy in the digital age. Movements like Hash Me Too had given a voice to the voiceless, empowering victims to come forward and share their stories. But it had also created a climate of fear and suspicion where accusations could be weaponized and reputations destroyed. Miss Stevens' trial became a microcosm of these broader societal trends. A stark reminder that the pursuit of justice and the search for truth were often fraught with complexity and nuance. The verdict. The tension in the courtroom was palpable as the jury filed back in, their faces betraying nothing. The silence was deafening as the foreman read the verdict. On the count of... He began his voice, a monotone drone that belied the weight of his words. Every eye in the courtroom was fixed on him, hearts pounding in unison with the rhythmic tapping of the court stenographer's machine. Miss Stevens, her face pale, gripped the edge of the table, her knuckles white with the effort of maintaining her composure. Not guilty, the foreman declared, the sound reverberating through the silent courtroom. Gasps and murmurs erupted from the gallery, a wave of shock and relief washing over the room. Miss Stevens slumped back in her chair, tears streaming down her face, a mixture of relief and disbelief washing over her. The prosecution team sat stunned, their case once so airtight, now in shambles. The defence attorney, a hint of a smile playing on her lips, placed a reassuring hand on Miss Stevens's arm. A world watching. The verdict, broadcast live across the nation, sparked a firestorm of reactions. Social media exploded, hashtags trending, opinions fiercely divided. Some celebrated the verdict, praising the justice system for recognizing Miss Stevens' innocence. Others, fueled by anger and disappointment, denounced the decision, clinging to their belief in her guilt. The trial, though over, left its mark on all involved. It forced them to confront uncomfortable truths about love, betrayal and the complexities of human relationships. It highlighted the power of narratives, the influence of the media and the fragility of truth in the digital age. And at the centre of it all stood Miss Stevens, forever changed by the ordeal, her life irrevocably altered by the accusations and the relentless scrutiny of the public eye. Acquitted but not exonerated, she faced the daunting task of rebuilding her life haunted by the shadows of the past, forever linked to the shocking case that had captivated the nation.